Good morning. Welcome back to Debrick. You're watching the show that brings what you need to think about as we begin the day. And today being the 20th of May 2019, we want to take a look at uh, a special focus at uh, what's happening in the youth sector. Of course, we have the Cabinet Secretary uh, in charge of Public uh, Service, Youth and Gender Affairs, Professor Magri Kobia. Karibu Thank sana. You. Thank you very Welcome much. Welcome back to the show. And of course, uh, we begin from the point that uh, a few weeks ago, we saw the economic survey by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics indicating that uh, there has been a growth in terms of uh, employment opportunities that have uh, come for uh, the country. Of course, we understand that uh, over 800,000 uh, new jobs were recorded in the year 2018. But there has been contestation. People feel, mm -hmm. where are those jobs? Maybe you can just start by giving us a perspective. When you talk about 800,000 new jobs, what are the dynamics that may come in that big number? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Sam. Um, you know, in a government, we want to avail employment opportunities, especially to the youth. In this country, uh, our youth, especially those who are 18 to 35, mm -hmm. form almost 40% of our population. And uh, if you find any country where the youth is unemployed, mm -hmm. and the youth forming the biggest uh, age structure, because if we say in Kenya about 70% of the population is that the five years are below, mm -hmm. uh, which means that um, then there are those who are under 18, which means they are dependents. There are those who are over 65, they are also dependents. So what uh, any country like Kenya would be trying to do mm -hmm. is to find employment for the biggest segment of the population mm -hmm. so that they can be able su to support those who are below age and those who are aged. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in the Kenyan context, um, in the last year economic survey, uh, we, we had created about 850 jobs. Mm -hmm. Out of these 850 jobs, about 8,000 are found from formal mm -hmm. sector. About, of course, about 760 mm -hmm. are coming from informal. Right. Informal sector uh, involves all those small organizations that are micro, uh, medium, mm -hmm. that uh, many people in Kenya find employment or li their livelihood there. What that means, the future of the jobs in this country, and I think in Africa, they are going to be coming from the informal sector, mm -hmm. which means in a government like Kenya, which is very much committed in creating jobs for the citizen, they have to invest in these micro and the small enterprises, because right. that's where the jobs are of the future will come from. And these jobs of the future mostly, of course, are for the youth, and that's why when in one of the struggles we have as a, as a government or as a country is the whole issue of youth unemployment. Mm -hmm. And that's why you find the government is investing a lot in education, it's investing a lot in training, it's investing a lot in health sector, and of course in the whole infrastructure okay. so that it can facilitate creation of jobs. Okay, so when you talk about uh, the government's initiative in enhancing that uh, there are employment opportunities, you speak about education, which is true when you look at uh, the mm -hmm. number of inst institutions we have, the investment in TVET, but there's still a gap that mm -hmm. uh, you have a very educated populace, mm -hmm. um, the young population, very educated, but uh, the unemployment level is still high. Mm -hmm. So what are those exact measures that the government is putting in place, not just to equip them with skills, mm -hmm. but to create those employment opportunities? Okay, thank you, Sam. Uh, one, I think in Kenya we must ask ourselves, why are the youth not finding jobs? And uh, from where I sit, mm -hmm. being the ministry responsible for youth affairs, we, we have looked at uh, reviewing the policy, the national youth policy, so that we can be able to answer questions that how do we need to empower youth so that they can be able to find jobs. Mm -hmm. So in the last two years, we have spent time engaging all the stakeholders, engaging the youth themselves, so that they can have a policy that will address to the concerns of employment among others. And in this youth policy, we try to answer questions like, Yes, education has been expanded. Mm -hmm. There are many interventions, yet they are still find that the youth are not finding jobs in the job market. Mm -hmm. And there could be several reasons. And that's why you find in this intervention, no one ministry can address all the problem. It's like you look at the whole of government and see how is this policy going to enable those in, in 
education, those in ICT, those in faith-based, you know, private sector, that their effort of trying to engage the youth is, has to be all inclusive. Mm -hmm. Therefore, what the government has done is to, within the policy, to find where are those gaps. And we find, um, we have found there are some youth who are very well educated at the university level, but the skills they have do mm -hmm. not match with the uh, job market. Therefore, I've gone to the, up to the university, I have a BA, but this BA cannot help me to find a job. Therefore, we already find that uh, there is a gap. The skills the youth have uh, is a mismatch with what the market needs. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, what the government has done has kind of had some uh, empowerment program. Right. And what do we mean by youth empowerment program? Youth empowerment program are all those efforts that encourage youth to take disposable for their own lives. And this would mean, as a youth, then I need to know to have information, where are the jobs? Two, I also need to know as a youth, mm -hmm. what, what is it within my own competent personality that I can relate with and attitude that I can be able to find the, youth, the, the jobs within the, the market. Mm -hmm. And then of course, the, there's the whole issue of, um, of, of the economy the economy, of course, you remember to vision, in Vision 2030, we said for Kenya to grow and sustain a, a very good economic growth, we must grow at 10% and sustained for a quite a length of time, mm -hmm. perhaps 10 years. Right. In but the you last to get year, there. yeah, in last year, mm -hmm. the economic survey 2019, uh, Kenya has grown at 6.3, and I think those are good trends taking into account. Uh, growth in the region, in the region of 3.5, globally is 3. Mm -hmm. So when Kenya, we say we have grown at 6.3, that means if the economy grew, then that provides job. So one reason why there is youth unemployment, the rate of about 22%, is because also our economy has not been growing as expected. But, but I but, want But, but see, before you carry on, mm -hmm. that figure of 6.3% GDP growth is very contentious. Because yeah. when you look at the report, the reasons why there was that growth is basically agriculture and a bit of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Because you are told that agriculture grew by about 34%, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing grew by about 11 point, point, point something percent, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But the reasons why there was that growth, it's attributed to better rains. So mm -hmm. there's nothing exact that you are doing to grow mm -hmm. the economy. Mm -hmm. It's just mother nature. No, I, I, I don't think that is true. Uh, it is true sometimes the, the growth of economy might not be as inclusive as maybe it looks because as I said, most of the jobs, 85% of the jobs are found in the informal sector. In the informal sector, data can, is not very well captured mm -hmm. so that it can support the economic growth. I would actually say most of the data is captured from formal Mm -hmm. uh, a sector, and I think that's why uh, people, majority of people who are involved mm -hmm. in the informal sector, or um, general citizens, when we say we have grown at 6.3, they're asking where is the growth? Yeah. And of course, that, that means that's why the government would want to be very inclusive in growth, mm -hmm. so that we don't have like a 10% a of Kenyans who are doing very good business, and of course also GDP has been criticized mm -hmm. as one indicator of indicating growth, because GDP is an average and sometimes an average can be quite misreading because it may look like everybody is in it yet sometimes that's an average mm -hmm. but when you look at the details you might find actually there are people who might not have, not have felt that growth however some let me say what the government has done in terms of creating jobs okay. when we you do like infrastructure infrastructure like electricity and the last mile connectivity we are finding a lot of youth who have technical skills, being able to go in some businesses. Look like uh, in areas like welding, areas like uh, starting small business, uh, even it look like events organizing. If you look at some of the people who have gone to tent uh, making, providing seats, you will find that those, those are very unusual mm -hmm. kind of jobs which are being generated by the infrastructure that have been put. Mm -hmm. Roads themselves, they will help those young people who have gone to agribusiness, they can now find market. 
you, they can be able to take their product to the market. Okay. And another reason may, why people also do not have uh, jobs, also we find those who have gone into small businesses, sometimes they lack finances. And this is where the government has done very well, especially for the youth and women. We have come up with women, uh, women Enterprise Fund, which gives of uh, uh, loans and funding, affirmative fund, to women, and within those women, there are youth. There is also youth enterprise um, development, development fund. fund, also which gives youth uh, some funding so that they can go into business. So what I'm trying to articulate is in addressing this unemployment problem, there are many streams you have to bring on the table, okay. right from lack of access, the of funding, skills, gaps, then attitude, because even as the government has come up with the technical vocation and educational training, still of some parents and even the youth themselves, mm -hmm. because of the attitude that the white collar job is better than it may be an informal job, we are still finding a lot of them who are not taking their youth okay. to all these uh, opportunities that are being brought in by TVET. So there are many reasons, and I think that's why in our national youth policy, we have articulated, if you, are, if you are youth who want to go into entrepreneurship, this is the kind of training that you require, this is the kind of funding that you require, this is how you identify what business you should mm -hmm. be able to go. So our appeal is like all youth need to, really to go out and find information, because information is power, this is what will make you understand what job will I find within the market. Mm -hmm. It is also unfortunate, let me comment that uh, while interacting with quite a number of youth and women, there are also some who are still waiting for that white collar job while they are still, still doing their small businesses. And I would appeal to them that uh, even if you can make good money in uh, small and micro businesses, there's no need to hang on there doing it temporarily, hoping when you get a white collar job, you leave because then if you can't put it all in all, in your small businesses, it's mm -hmm. likely not it, it not grow. And that's why we are told mm -hmm. uh, in every five jobs, about uh, three fail in the first two years. Therefore, that shows that when we go to small businesses and the government has come up with a policy on the micro and the medium businesses mm -hmm. uh, through industrialization ministry, then you need all the effort focusing in these small businesses so that you can grow in terms of employing more people okay. and also in profit. Y you sound like uh, the ministry is uh, more facilitative um, mm. than other things, but I mm. wanted to focus on that factor of uh, financing and getting credit from the institutions that have uh, been formed by the government. Mm. You talk of a Youth Enterprise Development Fund, Women mm. Enterprise Fund, mm. uh, Ways of Fund, and others. But we have an economy that, uh, in, as, in as much as it is not within your purview, the, we have the um, interest capping that mm. uh, limited the access to credit, especially mm. for the small and medium enterprises. And that's why there has been sh shrinking space for even the young people. Mm. So do you think you've been pretty holistic as a government to ensure mm. that um, these institutions are able to access credit and finance their operations? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, actually, the role of government is to facilitate it. You actually saying we, 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 we have been facilitative because government jobs in government are very few. If you look at the total jobs that can be found in the government, including disciplined forces, including those who are in the civil service, those who are working in the county, can it total to almost well, just one million. Mm -hmm. Those are very few. However, the role of the government is to be facilitative, to create the business, the business environment that uh, can make uh, ease of doing business mm -hmm. uh, uh, comfortable for those going in small businesses. And I think the government has done a lot. Regarding uh, financing for youth enterprise, mm -hmm. because, we, you know, for government to give an intervention, it has to be very much evidence-based. One of the studies that have been done is to find why are those who are in business not doing ex well as expected. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons is access to, fi to, to finances. And you find in government, government also brings in or facilitates private sector. Look at what KCB is doing with Tujiajiri. Mm -hmm. They are training people, and when they train them, they give them some grants. They start a business mm -hmm. because it is hoped when these people start a business and they grow, they will bank with the KCB and that, that in, improves the mm -hmm. performance of the banks. You look at the Tujiajiri jobs, 
which are coming through the Ministry of ICT, digital jobs, because I think he, the world is going digital. Mm -hmm. And um, I found some of the youth who have had more than one job okay. because they are already able to use digital online jobs and go into the jobs. So what I'm trying to see, the infrastructure put in by ACT is already enabling quite a number of youth to go into business, in, to do into employment, mm -hmm. which is not like a traditional kind of job. When you look at the loans I'm just talking about, uh, youth enterprise development fund, it, it is a, an affirmative fund that the youth are given and they pay at the administrative fee of about 5% mm -hmm. because when they want to go into business, one of the issues that has been raised is that when they go to a bank, they are not able to access funding because they have no collateral and therefore that's why the government came up with this fund. Up to today, this fund has given 14 billion. Mm -hmm. which it was started in 20, 2007 and they have given about 14 billion. This year alone, and this is a revolving fund, mm -hmm. as people are given this uh, funding, they pay, and that revolving fund is given to other youth who would want to but, go into the how, su how successful is the repayment and even the stories that we hear of uh, scandals and the embezzlement of funds by mm -hmm. officials of uh, the fund? The model for funding is very is kind of uh, it kind of ring fences how repayment can be enhanced. For example, for for you to get a loan, you must get into a group, mm -hmm. a group of uh, a number of young people who have identified a project they want, a business project they want to go into, and the guarantee for that loan is each other. Mm -hmm. For the women. In fact, the repayment is already at 97 percent. I do not know any other uh, organization where the repayment of a loan is at 97. Mm -hmm. For the youth, it's a little bit less. It's about 94, mm -hmm. where the youth repayment rate is 94. Therefore, for me, that uh, that easy to access fund is already helping the youth and okay. we have success stories every time you go to the county you'll be able to see young people mm -hmm. who have said we got a loan of 500,000 in last year we have been able to use this loan now we are getting 1 million mm -hmm. and at the same time when you come to access to government procurement uh, opportunities, opportunities. Uh, it is only youth enterprise fund where if you get uh, a tender and you have no money, you, the enterprise fund, can give you, as I did in 70%. Okay. Therefore, when you look at the, all this effort, mm -hmm. I think and these are people who but, cannot but, be but able to go feel, to bank. Do you feel you have done sufficient sensitization so that mm. the young people that uh, make noise every other day that they yeah. do not have jobs, they are suffering, they have degrees, mm. they are doing small businesses with Buddha Buddha and they are not comfortable. Have you made enough of sensitization to ensure mm. that they can move away from that kind of environment that they don't like to what they may dream of? Uh, we have done uh, quite a bit of sensitization. It might not have been 100 percent, but that's why we have like a National Youth Council, which is supposed to look at all the issues that the youth are complaining about, and then be able to and uh, to address those issues. Mm -hmm. It's true. Sometimes we go to some forum and we ask uh, how many people know about the Youth Enterprise Fund, mm -hmm. and you find there are not as many. But uh, I think what youth could go could do, going to the office of the. De uh, deputy county commissioner in every uh, constituency, mm -hmm. they shouldn't be able to find information because that's why I said as youth we cannot just sit at home and wait Anyways. these opportunities will come. Okay. Government has put a lot of opportunities out there, county government, national government, training opportunities. The youth must be able, and that's why in education mm -hmm. uh, there are this effort of saying now we want to have a competence-based education so that as an individual I can be able to find Rather than concentrate on the problem, mm -hmm. I should be concentrating on the solution to that problem. If I'm a youth and I don't have a job, okay. but I should not be able to sit there and say there are no jobs, but I should find what is it that I can be able to go and do, what am I good at? Mm. And uh, what is the government doing in terms, if I want to start a small business, where would I get if, if funding? Okay. Where would I get any other um, business development services that will help them grow? So I think it is true. Some, some youth are saying they do not have information, they don't know where to go, but every youth can access a chief. And a chief knows about what government is doing mm. to empower the youth in terms of the loans, in terms of the training opportunities, inclu including this 
Tibet trading institution are within reach okay. and there are also information centers. We also have youth centers, about 52 youth centers for every county mm -hmm. where youth can go and be able to find information of what it is that they want to do. But of course, let me some also say, even uh, the youth also need to have that clarity what you do want to do. Because also when you are going to look for information, mm -hmm. we are in the era of too much information. You must be clear what kind of information do you want for you to be able to sustain yourself in terms of finding a meaningful job or in terms of employing yourself or in terms of getting technical skills right. that can either be used by being employed or going into small businesses. So it is very important to get that clarity. And that's that's why we say some of the empowerment program include mentorship mm -hmm. where people look at uh, within the very range where people have done well and they can be, be able to provide. I've also seen professional bodies going back to their rural areas to mentor the youth okay. so that they can be clear what the my credit of what you want to do must be there first and I think that's why through schools in form four level career opportunities are very important mm. so that the youth can be empowered to know what is it that they can be able to do what opportunities are there from government from private sector from faith based mm. so that they can be able to find something meaningful to do All and right. contribute to the economy and to the society i want us to focus briefly on the public service issues that um, of course still falls under your docket and there's um, uh, this general feeling that um, the wage bill is so high because of the size of the public service, uh, but uh, the efficiency uh, mm -hmm. many times is not seen because when you go to a government office, um, unless you know someone, then it, it becomes a challenge to access service. I don't know, what exactly are you doing to ensure that you have um, a public service that is efficient mm -hmm. without going through the discomfort that people have to go through when they visit a public office? Mm. Thank you, Sam. Uh, regarding public service in Kenya, uh, public service plays a very critical role mm -hmm. uh, to support government deliver to its people. So I think over the years, if you look the way public service is, that is, is working right now, mm -hmm. I can say there have been improvement in efficiency and effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Look at the Uduma centers where people go for service. I don't think you need to know anybody. Mm -hmm to get service at Uduma Center. Uduma Centers are now uh, providing about over 100 government services. In fact, we call it a supermarket super for government services. Mm -hmm. You'll go and be able to, to get uh, the ID, you'll be able to register for a business, you'll be able, even the Uduma numbers that is going on there right now. So I think uh, you don't need to know anybody to go to Unduma Center to be served. Mm. And uh, many times in, uh, I've heard people say um, the, the public service is not efficient. It could, we could improve, of course. And, and they the, said that because of the delays they have to encounter. But I don't think it is like maybe a few years ago. Now, right now there's a lot of improvement because uh, Perhaps when, when we talk about public service, people look at services like services in health, services in education, services in security. So if you look at how access to those services, I think that's where you see you can be able to improve by being able to know at right now mm -hmm. where, where are we in terms of access. And I can see it has been an improvement. Okay. And of course, the whole issue of wage bill, mm -hmm. we are struggling with the wage bill because we are saying our wage bill stands at 50% of our revenue. And uh, we know from uh, professional appro approach and, uh, and, and the data mm -hmm. that we should be having like 35%. Okay. Therefore, what um, the government is doing, mm -hmm. of course, is trying to revisit the whole issue of wage bill. But at the same time, we also in the public service, we want to attract and retain mm. competent uh, staff whom government has already invested in the past. Therefore, the whole issue of wage bill is being approached by government from many angles. Okay. That means making those who are in more efficient using advances of ICT. Because now, like I've said, when you have the, the Unduma centers, then even the number of people may be might, might, might reduced. The, so uh -huh. making uh, um, the public service more efficient, more effective by working with the competent, motivated staff, I'm sure then it can, we can remain lean. Right now, actually, the government is quite lean in terms of civil servants. We are talking about the national government mm -hmm. having close to 90 six thousand and maybe in the counties maybe another one 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 forty 
So and when you look at yeah, so we are actually saying the the civil service is is not as uh, exaggerated as people think. Okay. But uh, in terms of the wage bill, we have to listen to ourselves, the entire public service. Uh, we must ask questions uh, that, are we having a public service that is not productive? Because if our economy is growing, then we would be able to afford the kind of wage bill. Uh, but and, so and, long and the, as over 50%, yes. I think that is not sustainable. And, and the concern, Waziri, mm. is that um, even as you talk about uh, the wage bill, when you look at uh, the general uh, income for mm. the general or for the average civil mm. servant, it's mm. pretty low compared to the private sector. Mm. But the leadership at the top, it's it's very high. I'm sure you know the conversation with the members of parliament with mm. the housing allowance. Mm. Maybe from your perspective, what is the clarity here that we hear uh, the National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi saying that uh, all the other state officers receive a housing allowance mm. and also so they also have to receive one. Do you receive a housing allowance yourself? Let me talk about the CSs and the PSs because I'm familiar with that. They fall in the civil service. Mm -hmm. We get what we call consolidated salary. Mm -hmm. When you get the consolidated salary, is like we 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 have worked in a way that sixty percent is basic. Mm -hmm. Out of your consolidated salary, sixty percent is basic. Mm -hmm. Forty percent is all other allowances, mm -hmm. house allowance included. Mm -hmm. So when you hear maybe some quarter says they don't have house allowance, it's not true because. CSS, PSS, because they, we are state officers, we get our consolidated salaries. Mm -hmm. Members of parliament are also state officers. So the salary that they have, there is a component of house allowance. Therefore, when I think there is an argument that uh, in a state officer there is no house allowance, I can say for sure there is a house allowance. 60% mm -hmm. of your salary in your consolidated is basic. Mm -hmm. 40 includes house allowance and any other allowance that may be So if MPs were to get, if the members of parliament, or parliament were to get uh, another housing allowance, that, that would be double payment? You see, we have what we, the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, mm -hmm. that every time, let's say where I sit mm -hmm. in this public service, if I think there is an allowance that is required by any quarter of public servants, I would actually seek concurrence from SRC. Mm -hmm. So whatever any other allowance or remuneration uh, members of parliament would need, they would have to seal, seek concurrence of SRC. I think that's why they're having a conflict because maybe they didn't seek it or if they, they sought it, they misunderstand no, it. No, I'm asking, From, mm. because for them it's, it's very specific, housing yeah. allowance of 250,000. So that's what I'm asking, mm. because you're talking of a consolidated pay. To get a 250,000 shilling um, of housing allowance, is that mm. double payment? It, it won't be double payment because if you are already in your consolidated salary, according to the Gazette notice of SRC, mm -hmm. there's already a housing, a housing component. Then if you come again and get another housing uh, uh, allowance, then there would be a duplication of pay. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time, but there's a question I would want to ask you. We hear of uh, plans uh, to raise the retirement age from 60 to 65. Is mm. that true? And what is the logic behind that? Uh, uh, from where I sit in the Ministry of Public Service, there has been no plans whatsoever to raise from 60 to 65. Mm -hmm. And I have not had it, I have not also started any policy mm -hmm. that is working to that uh, direction. The retirement age in the public service is 60. If your services are required and is not going to obstruct any other person from promotion and you are willing to work, then if you are over 60, what you do, you apply for that job mm -hmm. and you get, you can be employed in contract of one year, two years, three years. Otherwise, the government has no plan for mm -hmm. raising retirement age from 60 to 65. Mm -hmm. And in fact, why would we be raising when there are so many youth mm -hmm. who already want jobs? And that's the, that's the yeah. same concern yeah. Yeah, that, that, that young Kenyans have. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. I wish you had more time to talk about uh, the contribution of uh, the young people in matters to do with the Big Four agenda, mm -hmm. uh, to do with universal health care, food security, uh, manufacturing, and housing. Unfortunately, now we're out of time. We'd also mm -hmm. have wanted to spend some time talking about uh, gender affairs. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, obviously, we take a look at some of the uh, two SMSs that have come through. 
through on what uh, uh, the viewers have been saying. Uh, if we may start with uh, who? Who wrote to us? This is uh, Jason from the University of Nairobi saying that uh, the over 800,000 jobs that have been created, who are doing these jobs if the degree mm. I hold does not meet uh, to the demands of the informal sector? Does it mean I have to drop a course to take another? It's a concerned student at the University of Nairobi. Tibet institutions are seriously understaffed, yet recent interviews for recruitment of trainers by PSC seem to have run into challenges. What is the true position of those who attended these interviews? I think I remember this mm -hmm. question some other time. Then another one. Um, Kirui from Nairobi, let the CAs not enjoy Kenyans. Let people retire at 55. Older people, or even 68 years, still occupy mm -hmm. offices. When will you wake up to the truth? And, and tell the Kenyans the truth. Um, I don't know how many they are, about mm -hmm. 65, but uh, obviously they are. I don't know what your response is. Uh, th th uh, thank you, Sam. I think the, the employment at Tibet, because as a government we believe uh, having the technical vocational education is the right direction to go. Mm -hmm. I think they have already employed about a thousand uh, instructors and they are going to, to, to continue as soon as the court, I think someone has gone to court to stop it. But I think that is the, the we have to, to, to strengthen institutions of Tibet. Okay. One way of strengthening is having the right equipment and also having the instructors mm -hmm. for all the diverse technical areas. I think, the, the, I also saw a question where somebody is saying I'm doing a certain course in the university. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is the issue of what discipline one is studying at the university, mm -hmm. but it's what they can do without the discipline. Sure. Because I've seen a lot of Kenyans who are standing completely something very different in the university, but then they're doing something very different. So it, uh, while they are going through the university, they should be able to find what solution am I going to, uh, to provide in the world of work? Mm -hmm. Because if all jobs are dealing with providing, solving a certain problem, and in any area, any discipline of study can be able to solve a certain society problem, okay. which individuals should be able to identify and start providing solution. That's why you find, if you are going to start um, a small business, mm -hmm. you must find what into the people want before even you go into that business. Okay. So there, there's not to blame the, the discipline very much, but within a discipline can be given a, a, a skill that can be sellable. All right. Yeah. But about, uh, uh, very, very quickly, I would want to say that uh, the Big Four agenda mm -hmm. has brought a huge opportunities for employment for the youth. If mm -hmm. you go manufacturing, it's about jobs. If you go about affordable housing, mm -hmm. if you look, if you had to construct even 300 houses, yes. how much technical skills and people will be required. Affordable, I mean food security, a lot of young people are going to angry business. So I think the youth need now to ask themselves with the Big Four agenda, what opportunities are there? How can we exploit them in terms of getting jobs? Oh, okay, so, yeah. so it's about taking initiative and seeking yeah. how to resolve the challenges the society is facing. Thank you so much, Professor Margaret Kobia, Cabinet Secretary for Public Service, Youth and Gender Affairs. I don't know whether you interchanged them, or whether it's <laughs> Youth and Gender Affairs, or it's Gender and Youth Affairs. It's Youth and Gender Affairs. Youth and Gender Affairs. Yeah. Um, for, uh, thank you for making time for us. We hope to have another moment to speak about matters affecting the society in different uh, sectors. So up next is uh, Sporty Monday with uh, Willis Rabur and his panel. He is back after two weeks break, so I don't know what he'll be talking about now that um, they finished where they finished. That is Manchester United. We don't want to speak about that because it's still hard for them, not me. Back in a moment.